I had a number of reasons for, for uh, being grateful for the opportunity to do this. Yeah, I think that the Air and Space Forces are crucial to both strategic and conventional deterrence. And that I think the mission uh, is, is obviously the first reason. The, the situation we have in the world with regard to the threats that we face, I think, makes it very challenging for all the services. But I think that uh, the Air, Air Force and the Space Force in particular uh, have crucial jobs to do that we absolutely have to get right to protect the nation. And I think given my background in national security that I was posture to hopefully help make that happen, to, to, to make us more secure. The thread that runs through my career, if you will, uh, perhaps more than any other, is uh, dedication and passion for protecting the American way of life and for protecting human rights more generally. Uh, the, the reason I was inspired to go into the military in the first place and to attend West Point and serve in the Army was, was the desire to defend freedom. And, uh, after the Cold War ended, I thought we had an opportunity to extend civil society, if you will, the rule of law, more broadly and to be more effective at leading the world in that, in that regard. Uh, I got involved in some human rights work and some human rights organizations uh, because of that. Uh, and some people see that as inconsistent. I see it as totally consistent. I think that, that's why we have a military. That's what our men and women in uniform, our airmen and guardians in particular now for me, uh, that's, what we're, that's what we're trying to protect. That's what we fight for, and uh, I think that's a noble undertaking. You know, I'm, I'm a, an engineer, among other things, and I believe in using data to understand problems and to help you get to a good solution and make good decisions. So uh, if you look at the metrics for uh, our performance of our systems and the adversaries, what they're building to try to defeat us, uh, it's pretty clear to me, and has been for some time, that we need to invest in uh, some advanced systems that are going to sustain our capability to defeat our adversaries. There's been a big emphasis on speed recently, but if you're going in the wrong direction, going fast doesn't help you. Uh, and if you're going at a speed that's gonna cause you to fall down uh, and, and, and not be able to get up, that's not gonna help you either. Uh, we're not in a sprint, we're in a marathon. And we need to, we need to make sure we're going at a, at a pace and a direction that's gonna get us to where we need to be overall. And the innovation we're looking for has to come from the operational community and is how they think about how to fight in the future as much or maybe not or even more than it does from the technical community in terms of the technologies that they, that they provide. We are in a national strategic long-term contest with a formidable adversary. And what you do every day is important to that struggle. And I'm very grateful that, uh, for all of our airmen and guardians for volunteering to come into our military and help us in that struggle. And I'll do everything I can to give you the tools you need to do your jobs as effectively as possible.